Okay, if you're a miniature gamer, you have made this promise and you have broken it. You have promised that you are not going to buy any more miniatures until you paint the ones you have. Right? Right. Well, I made myself that promise that I would not buy Descent of Legends of the Dark Act 2 until I finished painting everything in Act 1. And I did it! I finished painting everything in Descent Legends of the Dark Act 1. Let's talk about that today here in the Geek Corner. Hey there everybody, it's Rev Kev. Welcome back to the channel. So, as I just said in the introduction, I took the box off. This is just the lid now, because the box is just too heavy. Descent Legends of the Dark came out... Oh, when did I get this? I got this for my birthday, April 2022, so like a year and a half ago, almost two years ago, and uh, loved it from the moment that I opened this up. I loved the idea that all the players get to play, and the Dungeon Master is an app, and uh, so no one knows what the main story is. Loved the qualities of the miniature, loved that some of it was an app, some of it was with cards. For me, this was like just a perfect, perfect blend of technology and just old school dungeon crawling board games. So I started way back in those, uh, probably started more around Christmas time, like to be honest. So I got the, got the game in April 2022, it wasn't until Christmas when I finally fired it up. And I started painting it because for that Christmas, I got Army Painters Speed Paint. So this was new. I've never worked with speed paint before. So that's what I did. I said, I'm going to attack this game using Army Painter speed paint. Now, in miniature gaming, you'll hear different types of language, especially if you're not familiar with this. is like a completely different geek world that you're not familiar with. You know, a lot of people will just play the game right out of the box. They'll never paint the miniatures. They'll never prime them. They'll just leave them right out of the box. And you know what? That looks great. The, the miniatures are gorgeous and... Just Play the game, enjoy it, have fun. Other people will do something which is called just get the miniature to like, you know, table ready. You know, you just, just a nice simple table standard. If you just want to have some color, you don't want them to look like they just came out of the box. So you do like one coat, there's no shading, there's no highlighting, there's nothing fancy to it. But you try your best and you get some color on the miniatures. And then so you have it all nice and laid out on the board, you got some color. And it looks great. And it just makes your table pop. Then you have kind of the extreme miniature painter where like people do this like professionally and they do all the magazines and the professional YouTube channels and you know and, and you look at those pictures and like I think of like websites like like Sorastro's painting like I love that guy's YouTube channel I love his social media stuff I've learned so much from that guy but there's some tears that shed every time I see some of his work because it is so beautiful. And I can get discouraged going, I'm never going to be able to do that. And that's when you got to take those thoughts captive, because that's what we do around here. You know, <laughs> take those thoughts captive and go, no, I may not be able to do it yet. And try to change that attitude, right? And so you can kind of have these extremes, just right out of the box and this pro, pro, pro level of painting. Now, I like being table ready, just get some color on it. But you know what? For just a little bit more effort, not a lot, just a little bit more effort, maybe 5, 10, 15 minutes per miniature, you can actually get to a higher level. So that's what I attempted to do in this. They're not professional level painting, but you know what? I'm like really happy with how this turned out. Speed paint worked a lot better than I was expecting. Like it really did. It, made, it surpassed all my expectations. Now, I did use the first version of Speed Paint. So there is Speed Paint 2.0, which is available now. This was the first batch of Speed Paint. So um, some of the perks that were added and changing of the chemicals, you know, um, I didn't get the benefit from it. So I kind of did a bit of a blend of, you know, Speed Paint 1.0, some Citadel washes, um, and just the regular Army Painter metallic paints. I didn't have the metallic speed paint. So, so before I show you the miniatures, just a couple of tools that I use to help get me just a little bit beyond that table ready level, that table standard, just to kind of make it make them pop a little bit more, get a little bit more detail on there. First and foremost, you need brushes. A lot of brushes, a lot of different sizes. And I picked this up. This is like 
miniature fine detailed brushes. I got this off of Amazon, 15 brushes. I think it was $19. Like, it was like, a, like just a little over a buck a brush. They're really nice. I've been using these now for over a year and the tips are still great. They're everything, they're in excellent, excellent condition. These are something so cheap, I was expecting to just burn through these. And, but these really, are some nice brushes. The handle's got some good weight to it. The tips are great and really love that. The other thing I use is um, because it's speed paint, don't need a wet palette. So you don't have to worry about all that blending and the, the mixing of a wet palette that you see other people do on YouTube. I just went straight into a dollar store palette. And the beauty of having it on a plastic dollar store palette like this, I just run this under the water, take a scrub brush to it, and then it's perfectly clean again in five minutes. So really, really simple, really easy to use. Use that. And then for me, being a 52-year-old, bald, middle-aged hobbyist, um, my eyes ain't so great. So again, Amazon Fine. Just, you know, I think I paid like something like 25, 30 bucks for these magnifying lenses. Now I only use the biggest, strongest lens. This thing does light up as well. You can put a couple of AA batteries in here to light. I don't use the light for this because I find it just made it too heavy. And with the light on and the battery here, it just was digging into my nose and it was just an hour of painting and I'd have a massive headache. When I took the batteries out and took the light off uh, and just used my regular lighting that I have, like this overhead light that I put onto my table, worked great. And this just made the details pop like you have the miniature here just painting it so again if your eyes are getting a little older no reason to stop painting these were a great great purchase and they did have it comes with a whole bunch of different uh, strengths of lens you might not need the strongest zoom in like it was like a times five or something like that or times three i can't remember exactly but it makes them really big um really really worth picking that up Okay, so that's just some of the tools that I use. So let's go to the gaming table and let's check out the miniatures. All right, so here we are on the table. We got it all set up. So let's uh, have a look at each of these miniatures, okay? So let's start off here. We got our band of heroes that go out on this quest. We start off here with Galadin. So here's our, he's our uh, deaf, deaf elf. And you can see really loved how the speed paint picked up the details of his skin, picked up the details of the base. Even look at the detail. I don't know if you'll be able to see it here. I'll try to zoom in. The detail here in the string. That's one coat of speed paint. Just does an amazing job. Over here we got Chance. So our cat folk people. Again, and the beauty is we won't be able to get in there real close, but the speed paint even brought out the detail of his eyes, which was amazing. Back here, we've got our Marshall Brin. Can use some different um, techniques here. A little bit of shading, a little bit of dry brushing on top of the speed paint here. And we got our Wizard Cyrus. Now, this was the first miniature that I actually did with the speed paint. He was my beta miniature. He was my experiment. And when I did this flaming eagle here, his phoenix, and did his cloak with the speed paint, Right away I knew I was hooked. I knew right away that this was going to be a paint that I was going to use a lot more. And down here, this is the last miniature that I just finished last night here. We got uh, Keely, our uh, Dwarven Warrior. She's a combination of speed paint and um, just regular metallic paint with a Citadel wash on top of it. I, I don't have the metallic speed paint, so she got just the regular speed paint with a wash and turned out fantastic. And then the last hero, who's like my favorite because of all the scales and all the details here that came out for him, is uh, Varix, the uh, dragon hybrid, hybrid. And again, just loved how the speed paint picked up the details of the stones and his robes and the scales. So really, really awesome. So here you got these heroes and they go on the adventure through the land of Terranoth. And then you can come across some wolves. Again, these were some, uh, the first bad guys that I painted using speed paint. Now the gray was kind of hit and miss I found with these guys. Um, it took a couple of coats for me to be happy with it. But once I was happy with it, 
I was really happy with it. Again, you can get some great detail here in the face. Again, the speed paint did a lot of the work. Had a couple of fine brushes to get into the details of the teeth and the eyes, as well as the little skulls that are down there on the base. But these guys just look fantastic when they were all done on the table. You definitely don't want to meet them in dark wolf uh, dark woods at night. <laughs> and then over here we got these stone golems. Now these guys I had a lot of fun painting with them because I got myself an airbrush for the first time. I've never done airbrush painting ever in all my years of miniature painting. And so I figured I'd have a little experiment with them and just played around with the speed paint and the airbrush, especially around the shield here, kind of blasted some in there, blasted some in the little emblem in there, tried to get like an Iron Man arc reactor glow out of those. Really happy with how they turned out. Now, out of all the miniatures in this game that I'm disappointed with how they turned out, it's these guys here. It's these assassins. And now, they look good, and they really do. And I'm looking out here, and I'm second-guessing myself because they're actually a lot better than I thought they were. But I wasn't happy with the way the black speed paint went on. It just either went on too thin, and you can see too much white, or it was just too dark, and you lost a lot of the detail. But... Um, then I, you know, I played around with the bases. I did some dry brushing to try to clean it up a little bit. And then I did just like a wash all around kind of these weapon areas here. I just went through with a Citadel wash, you know, and just washed everything. And I found that really made a big difference. So, you know what? They're a lot better than I thought right out of the gate. <laughs> Speaking of gate, the gate's locked here to get into this dungeon. And guarding the dungeon, we have these fangs. These guys were a real blast to paint. Again, just an opportunity to bring a lot of color, do some experimenting. And I was using Speed Paint, the first batch of Speed Paint. So Speed Paint, Speed Paint 1.0, I'm not using 2.0. I'm not buying new paints until I use up my old paints. <laughs> That's the way I roll around here. And um, so these still benefited from the reactivation. Now, if you don't know what that is, is the Speed Paint 1.0, when you put it on your miniature, and you think it's dry, and then you put another coat of paint on, it reactivates the paint and makes it wet again until it's really, really dry, which is a great technique to help you with some blending. So these guys got a little bit of that benefit where I could go in here and blend some of the greens and the different reds and oranges in their wings. So I was really, really happy with how they turned out. But again, these bases, one coat, one coat of speed paint to get that kind of detail. Just love it. Then we bust through the gate here. Our heroes come into the dungeon and they come across these zombies. These guys were probably some of my favorite miniatures in the game. When I opened up the box and I saw these guys, I was like, oh, I love them. They look great. And the really cool thing that I love about the speed paint is the white speed paint does such a great job of bringing out these details. Like the hair, again, one coat of the white speed paint. And then there's like this pallid, uh, pallid flesh color here. A little small brush to bring out the detail of the eyes. And you just kind of go through and really, really love how these guys turned out. Ew. Again, wouldn't want to bump into them when you're going through a dungeon. Speaking of who you don't want to bump into, some of my other favorite minis in this game here are these berserkers. Again, this was a nice opportunity to experiment with some color. I love the oranges and the reds of this paint line. I find the colors just really pop. The oranges are great. The different um, uh, leather colors, the hardwood colors, the browns really, really come out nice. And, and the bone color, I'm trying to zoom in here so you can see the details of this. Again, that's just one coat of this bone color paint. It really just does an amazing job of look make look like looks like bone it really really does and so really thrilled with how these berserkers come out with the speed paint and we work our way down go back past the zombies climb our way up these stairs here and then we come into these plague monks these again the fantasy flight miniatures I, they're just amazing i love the details of these miniatures they come out so good again with this these guys were my first experiment of mixing colors because I wasn't 100% happy with the base colors that I had of speed paint. And I saw a YouTube video that says you can mix them up and get the color you want. So that's what I did. And I experimented on some 
bits that I had, some primed bits until I got the exact color that I wanted. And I'm uh, really happy with how that turned out. They mix really well. You can create your own colors just like any other regular paint. So they were great to do. Work away up here. We got some more dragon hybrids. These were some guys again where I did a little bit of experimenting with the green. I did one coat in one color, then the second coat with another to see if it would get that reactivation blending happening. Um, I was pretty happy with how they turned out. And uh, again, they look really, really good. Work our way back down. We're working our way to the final few miniatures here. These were a couple of some of the last ones that I did. Again, trying to get a little braver, experimenting with some different colors and shading and blending. And this is the beauty of this hobby. It's like, just there's so many great YouTube videos of painters that you can follow and get advice from. That's what I did. I just watch other people's YouTube videos and I benefit from their experience. So here are these guys, these couple of ghosts. Again, I was trying to get this light effect in these lanterns that they're wearing. It was a little tricky. I didn't quite get it the way I would wanted it to, but uh, happy with that. And like the little crying eyes that are under those hoods. <laughs> really thought that was really cool as well. And so they come back and then almost done here. Here's these ladies here. When you meet them in the game, they're brutal. Whenever we play with the guys, we see them come on the board. It's like, take them out first. These witches are nasty in the game. And I loved how these come out. Again, I love the reds and the oranges and the bone colored paint of the speed paint line. I think they just come out so nice and crisp. Again, this is all one coat. Try to zoom in here a little bit so you can see the details. There's like three different shades of red in here. You know, and same thing with the skin and the bones here on her head. Like, they just really pop. And again, that's one coat. It's not like three different shades. Not a base coat and a wash and then a highlight. One coat of speed paint. And then they're on the table looking, not just table ready, but they look fantastic. Like, I'd put these up against some other people's really, really hardcore painting that other people do. And then finally, we got the big baddie of the game here. We got the big giant dragon high lord guy here. Um, again, wanted to uh, really try to highlight the details of this guy. Was um, Did the undercoat in speed paint with the white. And then the purple. Again, wasn't a huge fan of the purple. It went on a little dark. So I intentionally went through it again and did a, did a dry brush of the purple. Just to kind of make it pop. But I love... Again, with the speed paint, picking out these little details was actually really easy. You just put a little drop on and it fills it in for you. Fills in the cracks, just looks fantastic. So thrilled. And then for the stones, I was getting sick of just doing gray stone bases like I've been doing on everybody. So again, I tried that uh, reactivating blending idea with some reds and some oranges and some yellows. And when they dried, it looks like crystals it looks like lava like it just really came out so good and this guy like he's just an incredible incredible miniature again when i first opened the box and saw him in there it's just like my jaw just dropped in the detail of him so that is all 40 miniatures from descent legends of the dark act one i've been playing with my buddies we're probably about 10 missions, 12 missions into it. Don't know how many more we have. I think it goes to like 16, something like that. So we're having a blast with this game. Let's head on back down to the geek corner. So again, that's all 40 miniatures from Descent Legends of the Dark painted using Army Painters Speed Paint 1.0. Um, when I was doing these, I didn't think I was going to do tutorial videos or anything like that. So that's why I don't have all the details of what colors I used or anything like that. It's kind of an introduction to Army Painter's Speed Paint. It's also an introduction to Descent Legends of the Dark. And it's just a way for me to geek out with all of you and have lots of fun. <laughs> So if you found this video helpful, if you enjoyed it, if it encourages you to kind of step up your game a little bit, try something different, try to improve, man, let me know about that down in the comment section below. And as always, I really appreciate you being a part of my geek community here. Until the next video, God bless you, and we'll talk to you again real soon.